So we want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I'm Greg Devereaux, the Executive Director of the Washington Federation of State Employees. We represent 3,000 workers at the U University of Washington, at the UW uh, Laundry, at Harborview, at UW Medical Center, and all across campus. So let's have a big hand for all those workers. So a number of months ago, we had a town hall in Seattle about the plight of our members in Seattle, and it was about uh, locality pay. And we had a town hall for several hours, a wonderful panel like this, and we had a great outcome at the end of that uh, panel. And we hope the same thing for tonight. We really appreciate people coming from all across Seattle and the area, uh, and we really hope that we can talk talk about, speak to issues of inequality at the UW, and hopefully address them in the coming weeks. We have a wonderful panel tonight of uh, elected officials and other uh, folks. The president of the UW, Anamare Kause, has joined us as well. And uh, we are going to have those folks listen to you talk about your experiences working here at the end of that, they will be given an opportunity to speak about what they've heard, and then hopefully coming out of this, we will have, as I said, a wonderful outcome. So I'm gonna, without further ado, I'm gonna talk about who is on the panel. We have some other folks that are coming as well, uh, but on the far left, Nora Hood is a staffer for Representative Pramila, Pramila Jayapal uh, from the 7th District. Um, Lyndall Bervar is a staffer for Representative Adam Smith in the 9th District. Um, Representative Javier Valdez, the 46th District. All right. Um, Teresa um, Mosqueda is, um, she is, where, where are you, Teresa? <laughs> She's a city council member from the uh, 8th District in, in Seattle. Um, State Senator Lisa Wellman from the 40, 41st District. Uh, President Anamare Kause from the University of Washington. And City Council Member Kashama Sawant from the 3rd District. So um, we're going to get started, and I'm going to turn it over to your MC for the night, Megan Park. So I'm just going to give a little bit of background about the high cost of low pay. How many of you here are employees at the University of Washington? Good for you. For Everybody give them a hand for coming out to speak out. And I think we have some students in the house. We got students here too? All right. Great. So very, very quickly, I just want to set the stage. Uh, there is a struggle going on at the University of Washington. And the workers here who are part of our union have not been able to negotiate fair raises with this administration. Yeah. And all across the state of Washington, every single higher ed institution has agreed to locality pay, an additional pay increase for any of the workers who work in King County because it is very expensive to live and work in King County. And they've also agreed to 3% and 3% for raises. So every other institution in the state that we represent has agreed to 3% and 3%, 6% in raises and 5% in regional pay. But at... Yet at the University of Washington, our contract negotiations are, have come to a standstill and 90, over 95% of our members voted no to reject a contract. <laughs> the 
the university's last offer was two and two, and right now our members working at the University of Washington cannot afford to even get basic needs met, to take care of their families. It is a struggle every single day. And um, just to give you an idea about what wage inequality looks like, let me tell you what it looks like at the University of Washington. The top 250 employees at this institution make on average $186 per hour. The average wage for those top 250 is $387,000 a year. Yet, yet our members who keep this university running and keep the hospitals, both the medical center and Harborview running, the average pay for the bottom 250 is $33,408 per year. So, so that means that the top employees here make 10 times. The janitors, the custodians, the hospital assistants, the patient care techs, all of the people who keep this university running. So the average pay per hour for a lot of our members is $16, as opposed to $186 for the top of UW management. So, and, and those of you who live in King County, the cost of living here is crazy. And, and the average for rent for a two-bedroom home in Seattle is $2,700 a month. And many of the um, analysts have said you've got to make close to $70,000 a year to even afford to live in this city. So many of our members travel for an hour and more before work and after work, van pools, public transportation, um, to continue to serve the patients and the students here at UW. There's another piece of this struggle that's about how decisions get made. And I would, uh, how many of you have heard about the struggle of the University of Washington laundry workers? 94% of the workers at the UW Laundry are immigrants and people of color. They are, the University of Washington has decided to outsource, close down that laundry. Those folks would lose those jobs. And um, instead it will go to a company that doesn't offer pensions, doesn't offer real benefits, um, not union jobs like what our members at the Laundry have worked hard for all of these years. So in addition to the wage inequality, we also are concerned that the university is balancing the budget on the backs of the most vulnerable people who work for the University of Washington, including the 100 plus members of ours who work at the laundry who are now facing layoffs. Because decisions have been made about how money should be spent. And the question I would ask tonight is, is it the right thing to decide it's OK that the top management can make over a hundred, uh, ten times more than the um, workers that are the custodians, that are the um, hospital assistants, ten times more. So it's not, right. it's not right. So, but tonight is about all of you having the opportunity to tell the real story about what it means to work at the University of Washington and not be getting the raises or the pay that you need to get by. And I've heard the struggles myself, and this is your opportunity to um, share that with the panel. All of the people here are decision makers who impact funding in this state, impact policy at this institution, um, and we're grateful that they're here to listen tonight. And I, I just wanna say a couple quick things about how the format will be. We have two floor mics. One here and one here. You can line up at the mics and we will call on you. We'll go back and forth between the two mics. And um, the, in order to make sure that everyone gets to speak, we're asking that you limit your comments to two minutes. And we've got some timekeepers who are going to help keep you, um, they're going to let you know when you're almost out of time. So could our timekeepers please stand up so you can see? So they are in front of the mics. They'll let you know when you've got one minute left. And then what's the next sign? 30 seconds left, time to sum it up, and then when you're out of time. 
And the reason for this is to make sure that everyone who wants to make their voice heard tonight gets the opportunity. Yeah. And then once we're done with the um, input from all of you, there'll be an opportunity for our panelists to respond. One other housekeeping, we do have an interpreter here tonight who speaks Tigrinya and Amharic. I had him in my sights a moment ago. Oh, there we go, yeah. And so if you do need an interpreter, yeah, I'm gonna let him. Hello everyone, this is uh, Awa Michael Goitom, uh, and uh, I interpret Amharic and Tigrinya. Whoever needs help, I'm here. I can help. Thank you. So now we'd love to hear from you about uh, what it's like to try to live in King County and work at the University of Washington on pay that is very low without any, uh, currently, no raises that would really make a difference for you and your families. You know what? Uh, my name is John Frazier. And, and we want to set the tone for what we're doing today. Today, uh, we're taking the gloves off. Today, these people are here who have heard stories before. We're not asking them to just listen. We're asking them to act. No question. The University of Washington is the biggest bully employee, employer in the state of Washington. They bully the city of Seattle. They bully the state. And they bully the employees here. And it is time that we fight the bully. Everybody on this panel, they have been on many panels. They have heard many of these stories tonight. We're not asking them to just listen. We're asking them to help us fight the bully. And the bully is the University of Washington, headed up by the president of this university. The president is going to tell us this today. Make no mistake about it. She's going to listen. And when her turn comes to talk, she's going to say, I hear you. I know your struggle. I feel your pain. She's going to go back to her office and keep that train moving on making sure that people end up on the street, that people end up in tent cities. She's going to do what they continue to do at this university. So the question is today, what do we do? What do these people do today? We're not asking them to listen. We've asked that before. We're asking them to make a commitment to go back to Olympia, go back to City Hall, and do something about it. That's what we're asking for. I have been at this university for a long time. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Every time we come up for negotiations, they tell us the same thing. We have no money. They mismanage here the, the uh, dental center, the uh, clinic. Look, it's mismanaged. Nobody on their side gets fired. One of us come to work late and we're fired. That is not right and that is not fair. And we as Americans, we don't have to take that. People died that we could stand here. People died that we could fight. And that's what we got to do. And it's tough when no one's saying it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You're fighting the mighty university. It's a corporation, a $7 billion business. That's what it is. Okay, 30 business. seconds, 30 seconds. We got to make time it's, for everybody. It, 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 trust me, I know. <laughs> but the bottom line is this. You have to put on your fighting shoes. This is, this is David and Goliath. We're David. David won. We can win. We can do this. But it takes the commitment from people that we have voted for, people that we have put up front to say, stand up and fight with us. Because we can't do it alone, but we're going to do it. We're not. I don't care. They will take me off this university because we're going to fight and we're going to do what is right. 
So send that message to these people tonight that they must stand with us. Do we have somebody over here? All right. Please tell us about what it's like to work at the University of Washington and what your struggles are with what is the high cost of low pay. Good evening. My name is Danny Padilla. I'm a plumber, Southwest Zone. I'd like to thank the whole panel for being here tonight to listen to our qualms and concerns, and hopefully it lands on a good ear. My problem, my topic of concern, was first and foremost with the last contract negotiation and how it was implemented. It was implemented on everybody's anniversary, okay? I'm out 11 months. I questioned at the time when there were meetings, how and when will I catch up to the person who got that raise in January? Nobody could give me an answer. To this day, nobody can answer it. I will never catch up, okay? The way I look at it is the 11 months that they got into my pocket for on the last contract negotiation, they will use those 11 months on this next contract nego negotiation to pay for 11 months of my pay raise. So in essence, of a two-cycle negotiation, I'm actually only going to get one full raise. Okay? They've, they've taken it, and it was a shifty move. I called it for what it was at the time. I saw that this is how it was going to unfold, and we're living it now. Okay? Anybody care to address how that could be made right? I don't think so. Okay? Then the university says 2% or nothing. Okay? Well, they've already gotten into my pocket for 11 months of pay of increase. Okay? I just see it as another form of a pyramid scheme. Okay? They will shift this, move it here, move it there. The people that advance are on the top of the pyramid. The two on the bottom rungs will never advance. They'll never get their just day. When they say, we'll see what the legislature has to, to give up, we're going to wait to see what they do, I can't hang my hat on that. I need them to commit and tell us, no, right's right, you got wronged. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. My name is Eva Lopez. I'm a Harborview Hospital uh, patient service specialist, too. And um, I just want to thank you all. <laughs> hey! Thank you all for this opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I was asked by several members who couldn't be here tonight due to family, um, other jobs, because it's hard to live off of one job, especially if you work at Harborview. And we have many members who are still working right now, cleaning the offices, cleaning the OR, cleaning the rooms, cleaning the hallways of Harborview so it is presentable for the next patients and for the next employees to come for another day. So I'm here to help give them a voice and give myself a voice. We're tired of being called or degraded as being the help, just cleaning people just people who clean up and pick up our garbage. We are people who actually do a good job. Maybe not, we don't perform the surgeries, but we do do something just as important. We get the rooms ready for the patients. We, sorry. We're the ones who make sure the insurances are in place to make the transition from emergency care to proper established care easier for all involved. We're here to speak out and say, stop mistreating us for enjoying what we do, because we do enjoy doing the job we do. The institutional racism has become grossly spread throughout the management and the privileged few. We have a problem with management training new management, with the same old thinking of us and them. Instead, we need a we as a team to work together. We have managers who are training managers to be disrespectful to their employees by belittling them personally, harassing them for their culture, their race, and lack of English skills. That has got to stop. <laughs> the proof that UW Harborview does not respect us or our work that we perform is proven by that insensitive, disrespectful offer of 2 and 2% 2 raise. Let me remind you, 
UW and Harborview Management. And this is not a threat. This is a fact. You get what you pay for. It is time. It is time to stop treating us like just a number. And that number you ask, two. We get two cups of coffee a year for free for being members of Harborview, for being staff. One in the spring, one in the winter as a thank you. Yeah. We get, we get double the workload when there's not enough people to work at our, at our stations or at our departments. We're treated like second-class citizens. Yeah! because of who we are and what we believe and what we can speak and what we can't speak. And the 2%, that's all management thinks of us is 2%. I'm here to say, no, we are worth more than 2%. We are more than 2%, right? Right. Thank you. Thank Hello, my name is Mary Mathiason, and I was on the very first negotiating team back in 2004. You can take it off of the stand and just hold it. Take it off the stand and hold it. Yeah, that's a little okay. easier. Is it on? Uh, okay. My name is Mary Mathiason, and I was on the first negotiating team in 2004. And we worked very hard to negotiate a good contract that was particularly helpful for those of us who work in the libraries. Um, when the announcement of this town hall came up, I was eager to come and talk about these issues. And what particularly struck me this morning was when I received in uh, the email a message from uh, President Kelsey that said, if I could quote here, at the University of Washington, we measure our success by our impact on the world and our communities. By that yardstick, 2018 has been a truly incredible year. I continue to be moved and inspired by the creative and powerful ways in which our community consistently rises to the occasion, especially under challenging circumstances. Each of us, with our unique talents and perspectives, makes the UW the remarkable place it is. Together, in 2018, we celebrated everything from welcoming our largest incoming class of first year and transfer students to, under, un, to outstanding achievements by our faculty, staff, and students that set new standards for excellence, innovation, and creativity. Whatever brought you to the UW, a desire to learn, to earn a degree, to teach, to discover, to make a difference, I know that together you and this community will create the extraordinary opportunities and experiences with which we will change the world. So these are very high goals for us to achieve, and they cannot be achieved without the staff, the people who work at the University of Washington, the members of this union. And when we get 2% and everybody else, every other state employee is getting three and three, and they offer us two and two, it's, it's disgraceful. You cannot say, okay, my time's up. You know what I mean. My name's Joe Davenport. I've been a food worker and a food lead off and on the campus for 30 years. Uh, the other night, my son, who's a basketball coach and a student here, sat me down and said, Dad, your take-home pay hasn't changed since I was seven. And the other thing I want to ask when you get the panel discussion going, during the last few sessions of negotiations, and President, and Director Devereaux heard this, your personal assistant referred to the state hospital system that was so grossly underfunded here at the UW. Would the elected officials from Olympia please check the legislative calendar and find out when a state hospital system was created what I see now is you have two hospitals that you manage and two medical schools that you operate. That's not a state hospital system. You have a bunch of clinics that are often losing money. And it seems to me that you're balancing the us. The last contract cycle, we were told there was a 30 plus million dollar hole at UW Medical Center because someone had misbudgeted the overtime to train the staff for the new surgical pavilions. And we sat and we said, yeah, okay, we, somebody goofed, some heads rolled. We, we sat there, we can live with that. And Harborview is okay. Suddenly, you don't have the insurance building right, and both hospitals are hemorrhaging money, and that's back on us, because what was told to us was the hospitals can only sustain two and two going forward. So that's what we got is the medical centers are running this university. Why is that? When did we get a state hospital system? Just arg. There's, these things do not exist. I'm not trying to throw Miss Shepard under the bus, but that was, she went on record with that. Your hospital system. I work in food service, totally self-supporting department. 
a ton of these operations pay their own bills all the way through. And we're hung up with this mismanagement of your medical centers, and it all hinges on that. Just arg. My name is uh, Jesse Hammond. I work in the intensive psych unit at Harborview. Yeah, I heard an O. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's correct. We have one of the toughest jobs in Seattle, bar none. We all do here. Excuse me. I'm a very emotional guy, uh, even with my size, so it's hard to tell. But, um, but we do it because we care about our patients. Unfortunately, the acuity has been so high lately. We've had concussions this year. We've had injuries this year. I've been injured twice this year. I've had to go to employee health. And yet, the security in Harborview has had a hazard pay of two extra dollars an hour that we haven't seen ourselves. And multiple of us have had it, mul a, new, a numerous amount of injuries this year. Um, and we've been coming back, you know, because again, we care about our patients, but it has been tough. And the fact that they get to have the hazard pay and we don't is criminal. So I'm here. So I'm not even asking you, I'm telling you, we need that. We need that for our livelihood. We need it to, to, just to stay in Seattle. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mustafa. I was working for University Laundry about 20, 20, 21 years. But Last time, I got really bad news. They tell me that the laundry is going to be closed. You know, I, wasn't, I was off. I was just like, I feel like, again, I'd be a refugee. Like I was 33 years ago, I was a refugee in Sudan. But now, when the company is closed, all the people, 21 years, we all each other know. Somebody when have, this face is really uh, bad, we can't tell what happened. We help each other. Now, this laundry is going to be dismantled. Then the university, they tell us they was losing $75 million to 2017. But this year, they don't, have, they don't lose anything, they are even. But why they close this when they are even? Second thing, when they $21 million, they, they need to renovate the laundry or to build up the new one. But within five months, I don't know if you're going to answer it, um, Anne-Marie, if you answer it. Within five months, how they're from, five, from 21 million, it go to $60 million. I was hoping you, for me, my role model is going to be you because I'm a refugee, my age is growing up, and they are on the university, they're following. But if they are doing the same thing what you do, like I don't want, to be, I don't want them to be like a role model for my kid. This is not really fair for us. Uh, I was hoping instead of uh, grabbing the land, people should be first. Those 100, almost 120 people, they've been almost there is five people with everyone. It's about 60 people, 600 people, they are out of loose. This Christmas, this New Year, this Thanksgiving, what kind of, for those 600 people for the laundry worker, is crying. There is nothing happiness. What is it? Is it possible? Can, can the just later, they try to, to, to do on the January 15, but at the same time, you do it before January 15. What is going on? Why don't you wait until January 15? At least see the days later what they're deciding on it. Can you do something on it? Is it possible? Can you work together? I did ask you last time the same thing. Can you release that any workable things you can create? Thank you. Sorry. Hi. I'm uh, Nate Wilson. I'm from Harborview Medical Center. I've been with Harborview for 16 years. I just want to tell you, we are not animals. We are professionals. When the duck, when that duck accident on the freeway happened, 90% of those people came to Harborview and we saved their lives. We are professionals, but we get treated like animals. We had the, the CEO, Paul Ramsey, stand in front of the town meeting and tell us he understands that it's institutional racism 
That was two years ago. He hasn't done anything about it. Anything. Nothing. Nothing. When I look at this board up here, I don't see any black people up there. That's exactly the same thing that the, the, the people that are in the community of Seattle walk into Harborview. They see white people, but no people of color. No one on the top level of color. It's all white or white women. So I'm coming to you today and ask you, what are you going to do about this? You can't walk around saying that you're with the King County and you represent everybody when you're only representing the white people. Institutional racism. You're teaching the management how to suppress the minorities. Look at the people that you're closing out. The, 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 the environmental people, they wear black and gray. The higher level people, they wear the blue. The people who are just ordinary, they wear the regular blue, baby blue. That is a synchronized, so when you see somebody who's wearing black or gray, they're lower class. You're teaching this. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Agnes. This is my sister here. Uh, we've been with the laundry facility for over 23 years. My husband as well works for the laundry, so we were notified that we will be laid off by March 30th, so everything is on hold right now. Um, I would like to tell you that a lot of the laundry people are, be, are feeling not valued. A lot of the employees there have been working for over 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. The most hardworking employees, the most dedicated. Yeah. All holidays, even it snows, everyone is there. But we felt so unvalued. If you could just find in your heart to keep that place open, it would help a lot of people. People that don't have voice, people that don't speak English. A lot of them, I don't think they could even find new jobs because they could hardly speak the language. They've been there, they work so hard, it's manual job. They don't need to speak English, they just know. They're most hardworking people who are there. Can you please find it in your heart to keep the laundry open, please? Hi, my name is Emily Myers. I am a executive board member with uh, UAW 4121, and I represent 5,500 academic student employees and postdocs at the University of Washington. Uh, we are TAs that uh, have 70% of the contact hours with undergraduate students. We're the ones that know the undergraduates' names. We're the researchers that bring in hundreds of millions of dollars into this university from federal funding in order to do science research at this institution. And we are disgusted with how the university is treating our union siblings. So I want to tell you what it's like to work at the university. I'm a PhD student who is studying toxins in Parkinson's disease, but there is another toxin on this campus, and it's harassment. Yeah. Yeah. Harassment is an epidemic at this university. There is a professor in my department who is a known harasser, who has been with the department for decades. He gets up in classes and tells jokes that we should drug young women so they're attracted to old men. He told, a he told a student in a 300 person class that because he had a Middle Eastern name, he sounded like he should be on the no-fly list. And last year, a junior graduate student came to me and asked, in tears because of harassment that she had suffered with this man. So we decided to do something about it and we went to the administration. The administration did, a, did an investigation and they said that there was nothing wrong with this behavior, that this, this man would not be taken off classes. So I went to my union, 
And with the union, with our collective action, we were able to remove this man from supervising TAs. <laughs> so I just want to say that UAW 4121 will continue to stand with WFSI and the rest of the union siblings on this campus until everyone has a safe work environment free from harassment and discrimination. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Georgina Tabasan, and I work with the UW Consolidated Laundry. I've been with the places for 21 years, same with my sister, and I have another one also sitting down over there. And my concern is, I'm a single mom, and as of now, I'm having a hard time finding, you know, money to send my son to go school. How much more if this laundry will be closed? And I know we've been told that, and we've been promised that they're gonna give us job, but as of now, only four people would been hired, and some are got interviewed, but only six hours or four hours that been given to them. And if they gonna accept that job, they only gonna get like what six hours a day, and they've been told that they that their six, I mean that their sick leave and vacation will be cut. To from eight hours to six hours. No so how are we gonna live like that? If this thing gonna happen, how gonna how am I gonna send my son to school? How am I gonna pay my bills? And as of now, I'm in double dose with my anxiety and depression medicine because of what's happening. So if you have still a good heart left, please. Don't close the laundry. That's all I ask as a gift for this Christmas. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Phil Salvador. I'm a, a maintenance plumber here at the UW. And I've been here for 13 years. And when I started out, our plumbing shop, there was four of us. Paula was one of them. Yeah. But the others are gone. They've gone to higher paying jobs with the county or the city. They've gone through five leads. Right now we're down to two, and it's barely two. The other guy who's working with me, he doesn't even know if he wants to stick around because he's being harassed. And the pay is low. He could make $100,000 on the outside very easily. He's had offers, plenty of offers. But that, that's, that just goes to show you that as plumbers, we're not getting paid what we should be getting paid. We're not even close to 80% of the outside scale. When the University of Washington years ago used to be a great place to work because they paid really well, considering what they were getting paid on the outside. It's a shame that they're not keeping up with times. Now, this all comes down to the fact that we're threatening for a possible strike. And I don't want to see it. A lot of people don't want to see strike. a strike. A strike is a very last resort. But the university doesn't want to negotiate with us anymore, which is a bunch of BS. How come they can't be fair about things? I, I've seen yeah. so many contracts come through, and they're, not, they're garbage. They're just total garbage. Come on, be fair with us. Yeah. We work. We, we're here for you every day. We work our butts off. We're here for you and for the students and the faculty and everybody else. You're our customers. Yeah. I'd like to thank everybody here tonight for showing up and being present and listening to all of the gripes that we have about the UW. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Paula Wakazik. I'm uh, a plumber here on Main Campus, and I'm also the president of Local 1488. Um, I was going to say something different here, but you know what? I'm going to tell you about my morning. I'm working early and late because I'm the lone plumber in my zone. So I, I get up and I go to Hutchinson, 
and they've got a plug toilet there. There was two stalls, and I go and look at the tag. That thing has been plugged up since September 25th, 2018. You know, and this is December 6th. You know, and the custodian ran in and she was like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're here. But what took you so long? You know, I mean, to me, that's disgusting. That at the, at the University of Washington, what you're charging these students, that you can't get toilets unplugged for two months. That reminds me of when, you know, when the custodians were trying to get uh, help. They were having to do all these open runs. So Anamari said, you know what? Um, we're just going to have to accept uh, less clean buildings. So now it appears you're just going to have to accept as long as you have one toilet and one sink on a floor, that's good enough. Now you've got these students here paying how much money? You know, what's this all about? You know, they don't hire enough people. Things keep breaking down. You know, I want to tell you about what happened this last month. We've had four water main breaks. One of them shut down Hutchinson and Hansi, which is a dorm. They were terrified that it was going to shut down the New Willows dorm. You know, so what do those students do when they call up their parents? Oh, yeah, you know, um, we had to go to another building to go take a crap and take a shower at the great University of Washington. You know, things have got to be different here. And I want to tell you, you know, this just didn't happen. How many years have they seen it happen? And if they haven't seen it happen, they need to fire all those people who didn't see it happen because they're making all the money, they're making all the decisions, not us, you know? And that's why I'm here, because I want the state officials, the city and county officials, you need to hold the university accountable for the money they get. I know higher ed needs more money, but you need to figure out where they're spending this money. It's not on the employees, and it's not on the facilities. Thank you. Looks like I'm up. So, hang on. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, you're next. Sorry. You want to? All right. Spirits are running a little high in here, so I'm going to slow it down. I got I got this green shirt on underneath, and I don't want to take it off or anything, you know. But on the, it's it's an old union shirt, and it says on the back, it says, "We're the safety net." You guys remember that? We're the safety. Yeah, Paula's got it. Paula's got it. That's old school. Okay, so. What they told me when I came here was I was critical personnel. So that meant if it was snowing, if it was raining, if there was a tsunami, it didn't matter. I had to be here. Okay? So we got people in the medical facility, including the laundry, which is cleaning and sterilizing the bed sheets for the patients and the, and the linens for the patients. We've got uh, the power plant. We've got people like me, electricians. We've got elevator workers. We've got all sorts of people here who, who plumbers. Yeah, imagine a, you know, a plumbing problem that you could have. Okay, we have people here who have to be here for the safety of the people who use these facilities, including the hospital. And now we're talking about a strike, and we're talking about a strike because people are not bargaining in good faith like it says in the contract. And I, now, right now, I'm not talking to the university. I am talking to the state legislature. Are we not state employees? Is that, that, I heard that someplace. Now, if the state legislature cannot get involved in this and figure out how to give their employees frickin' COLA increases, and somebody's not doing their job. And I'll tell you, I'm a lead electrician for the Central Zone. I bring it every day. I have very little margin for error. Okay? So I expect professionalism from everybody in the university and everybody in the state legislature. Let's get it done. Let's avoid a strike. Because a strike is not safe. 
And, a stri and safety, I'm telling you, safety is not a priority. Safety is a value. You think about going to work without your clothes on. Clothes are not a priority, they're a value. You wear them, okay? And so is safety. It's a value, you don't compromise it. Thank you. So, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so my name is David Eisenbett. I work at uh, Harborview Neurosurgery, and I'm a patient service put, put, specialist. There you go, yeah. Hold the mic close to your um, mouth so we can hear you. Sorry. Uh, I work at a high volume neurosurgical clinic. So if you got a tumor in your spine, you're probably coming to see my doctor. If you've been in a car accident in Montana and you need emergency work to stabilize your spine, you're probably coming through our ER and talking to one of my doctors. Um, and I want to just kind of frame my comments tonight with a question. I can take a referral you send me turn it around in 20 minutes, have it ready for review. I'm dealing with dozens of people a day on the phone providing excellent customer service, as are my coworkers and colleagues. So I want to ask, because we hear a lot from our management, who I'll just say can't be any more out of touch, that one of the pillar goals that we want to achieve, and I assume they mean all of you, is making the University of Washington an employer of choice. If you're making you dub an employer of choice. Why have I heard from a coworker the other day that she's a mother of two daughters, one of whom's in college, and to afford to help her daughter go to college, she's gonna have to take a second job. This is a woman who schedules surgeries for one of the senior neurosurgeons, works more than 40 hours a week. Why are we hearing that? If we are, you are doing your jobs making you dub the employer of choice, we should work 40 hours. I'm willing to come in and do overtime, but they won't give it to us but they pressure us, more work, less time. And I'm sorry, but you're not living up to that pillar goal. I'm gonna be four years in January, essentially having trained myself to do the job. I was thrown into working for the chairman of the department from day one. I trained myself by asking questions of people who may not be there in a year. So how are you making UW an, an employer of choice with management who acts the way they do who is piling on more and more work, and you're giving us 2%. I'm sorry, that's not cutting it. And I normally don't speak at these issues, but I wanted the president of the university to hear my comments, because you're hearing from custodians. And I always thought, well, I'm white collar. I don't have it as bad, but I'm beginning to think I may have to leave my job. And I want you to know I'm proud to wear this. I'm proud of what I do, and I've heard people tell me, oh, this you, Harborview is not a great place to work. I am there because it's the only level one trauma center in a five-state region. I'm proud of what I do. Yeah. My doctor got hired right out of his whatever program he was in, and I built his practice, and I'm proud of that. I work with people who are wellness, come in early, stay late, come in on Saturdays to get the work done. They just ask to be treated fairly by management, and I can tell you, it doesn't happen. I've been bullied by management. I've been treated unfairly just, you know, by coworkers who've walked away scot-free when I said, hey, I don't think that's right. So that ain't cutting it, and I'm sorry. You may talk to me next year when I'm working at Swedish. <laughs> Hello, my name is Charles Howe, and um, I work for UW Medical Center Supply Chain. Can you supply yeah, chain. hold the mic? It's a little easier for us to hear if you hold the mic and hold it close. Um, I I had this long thing, but I'm not. I'm just going to tell you this. I'm just going to tell you the story about uh, this person that was on their way to work one morning. Uh, she got hit in the crosswalk on her way to work. She after coming back, trying to recover from her injuries, her boss, along with the supervisor, harasses her every single day. The last thing... Hold it close, hold it the close. Last thing we want to hear your words. The last thing that they said to her, okay? 
the last thing that they said to her was, if you can't do the job, go find another job. That right there is not a place that I would like to work or any of you would like to work. I want to come to work and do a good job. If you want to motivate us, motivate us in a positive way, not in a negative way. When uh, the recession was on, I think that everybody in this room, if you've been working here for 10 years, came to work. We basically was working for the UW for no raises. Did get no raise for what? I think it was maybe five, 10 years, okay? Even before the recession, okay, we were working. We go to the bargaining table and all they wanna do is offer us 2%. We try to negotiate with them and ask them, really, is that all you want to pay us? They said yes. I don't understand how if you're managing a budget that you don't put your employees in that budget. Right. To where all you have to do is offer them 2%? No, that's not gonna make us work any harder or any more. We need the money now. Yeah. Not later on, not your next budget, now. So please take it in your heart and take it away from here and do something. Do something right. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Drew. I work in the uh, uh, facilities gardener position. And I'm not sure if there's any other gardeners here, but if you are, hi. Uh, so I'm fairly new, been here a little over half a year, and while I don't have a whole lot of, I guess, um, experience at um, sort of seeing what the university is like to work for, I have talked to a lot of people, and I have sort of gotten my impressions here and there, and I guess the most important thing for me to share is that, you know, working for the gardener shop, we do jobs that are absolutely essential to the functioning of the university. We keep when uh, pathways get blocked by fallen branches, when ice makes ADA ramps in inaccessible, when there are hazardous conditions anywhere on the campus, anywhere basically outside, I mean, that all falls within uh, our jurisdiction. So as gardeners, we, I f get the feeling that uh, it's not really understood exactly how hard we work and how much we do and how critical the work is. And I do see that it reflected in our wages. And I just think that, you know, if the university wants to really set an example and, you know, really just keep everything running and keep everyone happy, they're going to have to pay attention to the voices of the people who keep everything open, keep everything safe for the students and the faculty. And, you know, really working as a gardener, it's very dangerous. We do put our bodies, our lives out on the line there every day, running wood chippers, you know, using, you know, really dangerous equipment. And, you know, there is a lot of, you know, we're always told to do everything safe, do everything safe, but, you know, it's, there is so much work to do and there are so few of us. So it, you know, there, we do feel a pressure to get more done than is, you know, reasonable to get done in the amount. So uh, I guess that's all. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Riddhi Mehta-Negabauer, and I'm a graduate student in political science here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, President Kause. In 2015, you launched the Race and Equity Initiative. And as a woman of color, that means a lot to me. And um, on the website, it says that in order to support and sustain diversity and equity at UW, as well as in the local, regional, and global communities we serve, 
we must directly confront bias and racism at the individual, institutional, and systemic levels. And these include confronting individual bias and racism, transforming institutional policies and practices, accelerating systemic change. Now, what I want to know is how you morally reconcile this initiative with laying off over 100 workers and thinking that workers here at UW, many of whom are immigrants, people of color, can survive on 2% a year. If you think that's justified, I'd love for you to live off our salary and see what that's like, you know? It's, it's unconscionable. It's morally wrong. It's politically wrong. It's socially wrong. It's economically wrong. It's no way is this right for our city or our county or our state. And I'd really love to hear from President Kelsey tonight, right now, what you think about that. How do you reconcile those two things? Your initiative for race and equity and the fact that you're laying off workers and think that they deserve only 2% a year. So there will be a chance for the panelists to respond, but we're doing that after the okay. workers speak. But thank right. you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Dowling. I am the carpenter lead in the Southwest Zone. Uh, Southwest Zone takes care of, I just want to talk about the Southwest Zone a little bit. Uh, we take care of all the housing and food service. Uh, we also have 31 state buildings. We have 12 dorms. Each dorm has approximately 400 rooms. That's approximately the double and triple occupancy, 8,000 students. Uh, we take care of every uh, cafe, every restaurant, all the uh, uh, Bay Laurel, the, the institutional kitchens, and everything out throughout campus. Um, with that, we have right now 13 employees from the supervisor level down. Uh, we're supposed to have 17. We haven't had a full crew of 17 in the last three years. Um, we have shown the leads and the supervisor have gotten together, put the numbers together and shown over and over again that we could hire five other workers that would be 85% paid for by housing. Have to understand the Southwest Zone, we work in the black. We make a $500,000 a year that we take that money and give 200,000 of it to other zones to make their budgets look good. We make money. We've gone there and said, we can make more money. We have the jobs. We are so far behind in other workers. I am the carpenter lead. One of my carpenters retired this year. I gave up that position to get another electrician or a machinery mechanic. We hadn't had a machinery mechanic in two years. We have just found out today that we finally are getting two new employees will be MM1s, um, the lowest level of, of uh, the staff that we have. There'll be filter techs and lighting techs. To, I, I, couldn't, I, th I couldn't spend 30 minutes here to explain to you what that means. When we have these brand new dorms going in, we went up the other day and found filters that hadn't been changed since we put them in. When the Maple Hall, which was two years old, has places that have filters that have never been changed. You know, it's unbelievable. And we, 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 why are the leads and the supervisors going and, and proving to management that we could hire employees and make money? And all these managers, we've hired four new managers in the last couple of years at six figures each. Why, why aren't they doing this job? Why aren't they showing the legislature that they could make money and bring money in? Why are we doing it? Why do I spend my time showing chart after chart after chart of all the work orders that we have that we haven't gotten done, that we could be getting done with these employees? I don't, thank you very much. My name is Rick Parfit, and I'm a painter in the uh, Northeast Zone, uh, outside painter, I do all the striping. I've been at the university for 18 years. Uh, I'll tell you a little story about a friend of mine who worked there for about 20 years. He left for the city of Seattle and got a $12,000 increase immediately. He got a 3.5% increase in pay every year. He's been gone for three years. 
I'm getting the feeling here that everybody here understands that we're all caretakers of the university, or you wouldn't be here. We all do what's necessary to take care of the university. I take care of your house, Mrs. Kause. I do the work, the painting, and everything at your house. I can't tell you the passion and the commitment that these people have right here to take care of your university. And you're not paying us accordingly. And I'm looking for another job. If I could, if I could go to the state, state, city of Seattle, I've already applied for several different positions. If I leave, I get a $10,000 increase. It's 7% uh, on my pension, and it's the best of two years, not five. I mean, there is no beneficial for me to be here. The only reason I'm here is because I love the university. And I love you people, and we take care of each other. This is, this is the first time that we've come together as a group. And right now, we stand on the precedence of being able to strike. We've never had this momentum in our, in, in our, since I've been here 18 years. John, you know what I'm talking about. The time is now. If we can't get this done, if you can't see in your heart and see the passion right here in front of you, the commitment to, our, to us to take care of the university, you need to take care of us. Right now, you need to take care of us. It's our time. You've had your time. When I came here, the director was making $60,000 a year. He now makes one hundred and eighty. dollars I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. That is not fair. It's not equal. And the, the passion that we have here, you need, to, you need to protect that. Because we could all just leave. We could all go get other jobs. You know, and it's important that you understand that we stand for something and we need to get paid. We need an increase. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Faven Wadede. Thank you all for being here today. I'm an immigrant, first generation college graduate. I work at Harborview Medical Center as a PSS. This January, this January, it will be 10 years of service. I've been maxed out for several years that I forgot when my last increase was. I love my job, but the unfair treatment has got to stop. My mother, my aunts, family, and friends work for UW. They work as custodians, as hospital assistants, and also as food service staff. The majority of these employees in these positions are people of color, yeah. immigrants, and refugees. I speak on behalf of the voiceless. They are overworked, underpaid, bullied, harassed on a daily, intimidation from for management, poor work conditions, retaliation for speaking up, a toxic workplace. This is a threat to their livelihood, to their children. They have been in these positions for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, and they are, un they are unable to catch up with the high costs of Seattle, of the high cost of uh, living in Seattle. We want action, we want commitment, we want follow-up. The bottom line is we need change, and the time is now. Thank you. I work as a PSS in the radiology department at Harborview Medical Center. Last week, I called for a hospital assistant to come take a patient to a different department for their next appointment. She told me she could not. She was the only one for the entire hospital. And she could not come and attend to this patient to take them to the next because she could not leave her area. And her lunch was going to be three hours later. How, how can we do patient first? How can we do patient first if this is what's happening? I have a hospital assistant here who's been working for over 30 years, Terhas, 20, over 20 years, and her name is Terhas, she wants to say a few words. Okay. 
My name is Terhas Baraki. I work in Harborview over 20 years as a hospital assistant, nursing assistant. We work hard, so hard in Harborview. Nobody's here because today, because everybody worked 12 hours. Yeah, hold the mic right to your mouth. Sorry. Okay. I'm not a good speaker because I'm a shy person, but everybody's working 12 hours. They're not here today. I'm here and one another person as a uh, nursing assistant is here too, with me. Thank you. We work hard and as a hospital assistant. I've been working for 20 years. I have kids and everything is expensive now. And the pay is so less than any hospital in, in Seattle, actually. <laughs> And like I said, I'm shy. I cannot speak in front of everybody. You, but I'm here. You're doing great. Because everybody's working. They're, they're working with the patient. Okay? That's why they're not here. I'm here. You know? And she said everything. What she supposed to say? Um, favor. She said it for me already. You're doing great. I, I cannot Isn't say she doing great? Like, Thank you. Thank you. As nursing assistants, I love my job too. I love working in Harborview, but I get paid so less than all the hospital, uh, other hospital. You guys can compare. And it's not enough. Yeah. Everything is expensive now. We need more money. Yeah. That's all I can say, and thank you. Yeah. Right. Hi, my name's uh, John Whiteneck. I work at the carpentry department at Harborview. Uh, I've been there for just about three years. Um, majority of our work is spent fixing the problems of outside contractors as they're hired more and more every single day. I have fixed banks of cabinetry that weigh 650 pounds with disabled workers working underneath them with three fasteners that aren't even in the studs. That's just one thing. We're constantly pushed to work harder and faster every day. The engineering team at Harborview gives it their all every single day, but yet it's harassed by management. Many of those managers were engineers as well. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, now they have teamed themselves up with their cronies. People that have worked for their previous companies. Ooh, yeah. 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 And yet they're taught to harass. And I do not receive this harassment as much as my brothers and sisters of color. Woo! You would not believe the treatment they get for speaking up. If any of us go to HR, we are chastised immediately and put on some sort of supervision where they are constantly watching over us. I can't speak for my brothers because I have a three or five-year-old kid out there that I have to, I live in Seattle. I have to send him to schools here. I make $10 to $12 less. I make, guys coming in doing outside work make prevailing wage in a King County building that you manage. How is that possible? Yet we can't get us any carpenters to come work for us that are worth a damn because who's going to come work for Harborview? I love working at Harborview. I love my staff. I love the EVS folks that we work with. Everyone there is great, but management plainly sucks. They're abusers. They're bullies. And sorry, the management that I work with, they this morning, I've been in the meetings, I take lead positions when my lead is gone. They curse at us, call us pussies, work harder, stop complaining. That's the kind of shit we deserve. Sorry, I'm from Chicago, I've got a potty mouth. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Hi. Uh my name is Nazar Absiare. Um, I work in health science as a custodian. Um, 
and I was in this uh, negotiation uh, part this year, and um, we were um, uh, working so hard, and we've been there for long, and I worked as a custodian, and for 30 years, I have seen uh, several uh, presidents at this university. And we've been asking uh, how uh, our work, how hard it is. We are the first in this building that we come in when we work. We started like uh, 4.50 a.m. And we just want to finish everything before the staff comes. It is amazing that we take all the dirty things so that we can see our, uh, the, uh, the, the staff to be in a clean place. It is, it is kind of that we give up all the dirty things that we take. You know, we just clean up all the um, viruses, bacteria, and we pick up all the trash. We are the first fighters in this place to do the work before everybody comes in a safe place, clean. They use the clean bathrooms. They are so happy as there is no any miss of everything. They got their soap, they are, they are everything. So in this negotiation, you know, I have been there the first time. You know, I have kids here that they go to university. I have two kids, they come here. And I just want them to be in a clean place that we clean it. And but within that, our two percent is not enough for us to keep our family clean. It is it is most important that we have to have safe place to live and you know uh, safe food to eat. But when we just came to the president office, the, you know the president was not there, and the one person just she just came in and she said, oh. We are just offering 2% only. We've been there for 36 hours talking. For 36 hours for 2%. So 2%. And we just were looking for the people who were just sitting with us, who they just telling us that we're going to get 2% only. They get about $190,000 in a year. They were just slapping our face. It is kind of a joke. Amazing. People like you guys living you know, in, in a place where we vote for you. And then you know, we give us two person. And just you said, forget it. Amazing. You know, look, these people are the one who just are keeping the university safe and clean. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So we are almost out of time, so I would like to say the, I recognize the gentleman at this mic, and we have two people in line there, and that will be the end. Oh, we got one more behind me. I want to be the last. I'll make mine real quick. So what I say to you is we have four minutes, we have four people, so I'd like our timekeepers to give one minute per speaker, save your applause to the end, so that we um, can stay on time, but thank you. All for speaking up. I just want to say, Ms. President, if you could look at me, world-class organization. You guys are quick to throw out world-class organization. You love to put the banners up on the front of the buildings, world-class organizations. Who are you talking about? Your third-class citizens that do all the work around here? Is it, you're not talking about me. So, world-class organization. I'm going to tell you guys right now, you guys are the world-class organization because without you, she wouldn't have no job, they wouldn't have no job, and this universe is the hell. These parents are spending a lot of money for their kids to go here, and we would do what we have to do to put the money in our pockets so we can live like you live. 
Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my, my name is John Brower. I've worked in the laboratory at Harborview for 35 years about. Um, I, I think since Harborview is under King County's ownership, that really the university fights so dirty that, I mean, in the lo lang language of the current contract, they're trying to argue about how many days you have to report a violation of, um, of contractual obligations. Um, there's a lot, been a lot of talk. Well, I think Key County needs to have an ethical oversight of Harborview. Yeah! Otherwise, nothing is ever going to get done. The, the, the university has really out-negotiated the, the union in the contract language. I mean, I, I have a letter here from the hospital safety, um, the laboratory safety officer, and this letter shows that they had negotiated, given the, the laundry from the laboratory, to a private contractor, Sintas, in fall or early winter of 2017. And, and that's, that sounds like, you know, contracting it out. And it, the document's here from the laboratory safety officer. I mean, that's a violation of the contract, but the contract is, there are, the university and the union are arguing about 30 to 45 days of notice. This would not be acceptable um, as, a, as a point to argue about. And I think that's why we need King County oversight, because the university has constantly outmanaged the, the union and, and played really, really dirty. And, and, and I think the university okay, also sum has, it up, please. The, the university has also been going really cheap. Um, we have bottled water taken all over the place at Harborview. Harborview does quality control water counts on faucets and taps everywhere across the hospital. Knows the place has been contaminated for decades, scores of years actually, because I've been there 35 years and have looked at the quality control water counts. The public does not know this. People who are immune compromised are walking to the hospital on chemo and stuff. They don't know what I was at. A, a cascade, cascade okay, we gotta... it was contaminated and then we just had patients die in the infusion center and that's the worst place to have bad water thank but you the, the university thank you knows, for your comments should know these things thank you we're gonna go fast because these are the last two speakers the gentleman at this mic and then we are going to um, turn it to the panelists for response and then we're gonna talk about what we can do to try to solve this problem okay can you guys hear me all right, my beautiful people. First, I would like to thank you guys, the union and everybody else, the UW. But I would like to point to three things for you guys. Humanity, empathy, understanding, and balance. We like all three, all four of them from you guys. In Latin, humanity means to care. If you don't care for me, why should I care for you? That would lead us to a negative attitude that we come to work in a toxic environment, don't take care of our family, be stressful, no pay, and what is the point of it? None existing. And in pros and cons, there's gotta be a pro, there's gotta be a balance. If you guys are balancing the budget on the working of the lowest paid people, it's called, as simple as that, it's a slavery. It's been practiced here before. It's not a new system. It will never be a new system. You haven't created anything better than what you had. For that to have, you should show us empathy, understanding, and listen to the employees. If the, in any civilization, he who doesn't listen to the streets will collapse. Yeah. Right. They told you are gonna give up and take the two percent. No, nobody's taking the two percent. I don't want it. If you guys need it that much, maybe I would like to give you the, my two percent. Cause I really don't. And I have made money in my life before in a private institution. I have raised my daughter Send her to a private school as a single dad, working in a private institution. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, no, no. I have to finish. I went very long quick. for this. Very, very No, quick. but the issue with them, they, not me, the, the people who have kids after me, how are they going to put food on the table? I'm not planning on having any kid no more. I don't want anyone. I am responsible for my own daughter, but I'm also responsible for my coworkers. Thank I'm responsible you. for Thank Julie, you. for us there, for everybody else I served in this cafeteria. Thank you so much. I still love you guys, still, still but I won't send my daughter to UW though. 
Thank you. Our last speaker, one minute yeah. at the mic over here. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a PhD student and a proud member of UAW 4121. You stood behind us during our strike, and we're going to stand behind you during your strike right now. I just want to say something. We've all heard of Flint, Michigan. There's a Flint on, and this gentleman just talked about water. We call the music building Flint because no one can drink the water. There was a main break in Hutchinson Hall drama where I, where I teach, um, and that's also not an ADA compliant building. If you have a mobility problem, you cannot take classes in that building unless you uh, can stay on the first floor. Now, here's the other lovely hypocrisy I just want to point out. I currently work as a graduate student assistant for OMED, OMAD, the Office of Minority Diversity and Diversity Affairs. My job is to help more students of color, first generation and low income students come to the university. I spent last couple of weeks helping them with their applications to grad school. In their applications, they talk about the people who got them there. It's these people. So how is it that this university rolls out a diversity plan, says we want to recruit more diverse undergrads and grads, but we treat their family, not metaphorically, literally. This gentleman has two children at UW. We treat their family like crap. And the last thing I'm gonna Thank say, you. last thing, when I now talk to students about budgeting for grad school, I say, budget for your union dues. Do not go to a school that does not have a union because you're gonna need it. <laughs> It's time to give our panelists an opportunity to respond. You're not required to. You are welcome to share a few words if you would like. Um, we ask that you reflect and respond to what you've heard tonight from all of these people, students, uh, union members, people who work in the hospitals and on the campus about the high cost of low pay at the University of Washington. So with that, I think it's only right to give our, the president of this university the opportunity first to speak. I ask everyone to be respectful. And um, our timekeepers, we will need our timekeepers up front because just as we made all of you keep your comments to two minutes, we will do the same for the panel. So. Yeah, thank you. First of all, I do want to thank everyone um, for taking the time to come out tonight. I know that you have lots of obligations and that this was something that you did above and beyond and I do appreciate it. Um, I, I heard, um, no surprise, um, a lot of anger and a lot of pain um, and I heard it loud and clear, um, loud and clear. Um, but I also heard, and I think this was incredibly gratifying, I heard a lot of pride, a lot of pride that you take in your jobs a lot of pride that you take in working at a university and a university, and a university setting. Um, and that was very gratifying. It's something that we actually have been hearing from the laundry workers. We are there um, every day helping people apply for jobs. And again and again, we hear that they want to stay working at the university. Um, not that it's far from perfect. I've heard about a number of the problems, but nonetheless, there's something about working at this kind of setting, working to cure, um, working to educate, that is special. And that is something that we share. You are absolutely right that you are caretakers of the university and that you are critical to doing the university's work. 
um, we've talked about equality, and I understand that um, you are comparing yourself to other people at other settings. At this university, in terms of equalities, 2% um, and 2% is what we offered all our other employees, including our other union employees. So we are not signaling you out any differently than we are other people. But I also want to be clear, I agree with you that our situation here is not sustainable. You do deserve to be paid better, as do other workers at this university. Let me just give you a couple of facts and then I will um, state, okay, this is what the state gives per student at North Carolina, a state that we often don't compare ourselves with. $18,000 a year in state support per student at the University of North Carolina. Let me give you another example, Georgia, $11,000 a year per, per student that the state gives University of Georgia. University of Maryland, 14000 University of California, yes, poor University of California. UCLA gets $11,000 per student from the state for every student that goes there. University of Washington, 5220 dollars. It is not sustainable. It is not sustainable. There are other universities that are down here. Penn State, 4,000. Their tuition is 18,000. Okay? I get paid very well, no question. But, but, I am saying that we do not have, I agree with you, it's important. we do not have a sustainable situation. And the best way of us getting out of this is to actually work together so that the funding of this university is such that we can do better by you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think, all right, we're going to let the panelists go. I know Javier was willing to be the first after the president. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Javier Valdez. I'm a state representative in the 46th district, which is uh, northeast Seattle. And first of all, uh, thank you all for being here tonight and for sharing your personal stories. Uh, first, I just really want to say that I'm also one of you, and I am a card-carrying member of ASME. Um, I'm really troubled to hear from, this is my alma mater, um, that the reports of, of racism and harassment and retribution um, are really troubling for me. And these will be questions that I'll be um, asking of our UW administration to explain um, and find out what's going on and why and when, we, when these reports are being reported, uh, you know, what is the case and what are the investigations and, and where does that lead to because um, we're all accountable to the taxpayer here and when taxpayer dollars are going in here, they have a right to know that investigations like this are, are taking place uh, fairly and equitably. So I will be asking those questions. Um, but I guess I just want to address one issue that uh, myself, uh, Representative Jerry Paulette, my housemate in the 46th, and Representative Mia Gregerson in the 33rd District, which she represents Burien and SeaTac, have been working on for a few months, and those are the folks at the UW Laundry. Um, we kind of became of your issue uh, several months ago at a meeting uh, that um, uh, Dennis Eagle here um, at, at Wolfsey uh, put together for us, and we heard from these individuals. And so we started engaging the UW on how we could work together to uh, help save this facility to ensure that this facility could stay open, but also perhaps trying to find some funding in the next year or two um, in our state budget uh, to modernize this place, but more importantly, keep those 100 plus employees, immigrants and refugees primarily, so they would not lose their union pain and good pension jobs that, that, that are being provided. And I, I must be honest with you, I love the University of Washington. This is my alma mater. But I was never more disappointed in the UW in my entire lifetime until a couple weeks ago we got an email 
saying uh, from the UW administration, despite our ongoing talks and an agreement that we would be talking and trying to find support in the next legislative session to help the UW find some funding for this facility. I never been more disappointed in my entire life in, in my alma mater to receive that email saying that they had decided to move forward to contract out and close the facility. So, um, so for to Agnes and to Regina, and there was another individual who spoke here, um, please know that we are going to fight for you. We are going to do our best to keep those jobs here and keep that facility open because it is simply the right thing to do. And we are going to fight for you. So for those... For those, um, I'm going to stay after the meeting. Um, if you are part of the UW Laundry employees, I would love just to chat with you a little bit about uh, delivering your message uh, consistently, but delivering your message as we continue our, our talks with the University of Washington. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to, we're going to transition to this other mic because I think this is the one with feedback. So let's, if we could use that mic, that's better. Okay, thank you. Um, so I am Senator Lisa Wellman from the 41st Legislative District. I chair the Early Learning K-12 through Education Committee, and I am proud that we were able to fully support education um, and with the McCleary decision and get teachers the respect and the funding that they need. And that was a big deal in our last session. But I will be honest with you, and I will tell you that the reason that we could do it is because the state constitution puts a box and says what's in that box has to be paid. Everything else is outside of that box. And at the end of the day, we have a state that is the most regressive in how we fund anything. There's a finite amount of money. This is not sustainable. And more money is coming out of your pocket than is coming out of my pocket. And for people who are making good salaries, they are able to keep more of their paycheck than you can keep your paycheck. And that's just wrong. That is not sustainable. We cannot keep funding the state this way. And we, you're, you're gonna have to fight for it, baby. You're gonna have to fight for it. We need a new way of funding things in this state because if we have another recession, you know what gets hit the same time the thing that happened to you the last time, you didn't get any raises then either for years. Absolutely, so we have to do something. You can't just look at one thing. Our job is to look at the big picture to make sure that we are making sure that we have healthy communities where people can live in our communities, that you don't have to drive two hours to get to a job where you can't afford to live in the place where you work. We've got to fight for the entire society that's here. Good news is that we can fight for Washington. It's not going to happen at the federal level. We've got to fight for Washington, but we need a better Washington. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nicole Macri, and I represent the 43rd Legislative District in the House of Representatives, this district right here. And I want to thank you all for coming out tonight, and I want to um, apologize for being late this evening and missing some of your comments. I am so deeply grateful, not only for you coming out, but for the work that you do and your commitment to the university, to your commitment to the most vulnerable patients in the region, your commitment to ensuring that this is an excellent university ranked up there with all the Ivy Leagues standing alone as a state university. Um, I am deeply grateful for, your, for the work that you are doing. And I also want to acknowledge that where you are right now is in a brave and scary place contemplating going out on strike. And thank you for doing that. I, I um, want to acknowledge that. Um, I will say I stood with UAW um, 4121 when they went on strike, and I will do the same um, if Whoopsie decides to do that. I take very seriously my role as a state legislature, legislator um, to stand up for working people. One job should be enough, and you should be able to work close to, live close to where you work. Um, and you should be able to afford to put your kids um, in childcare and get back and forth from work. And so I will continue to do that, and I want to echo 
um, the comments of Representative Valdez and Senator Wellman um, in that um, we at the legislature have a big responsibility to do that. We need the university administration to be working in true partnership with us in order for us to get that done. Um, and so I will be challenging them to do that and I, and I hope that we'll be able to work together. But to get the resources that we need, we need to work on progressive tax code reform. And I hope that you will be with us in doing that. We have the biggest democratic majorities than we have had in a really long time in the legislature. And we are going to need to challenge them to do the work that we need to do. So thank you for sharing these deeply personal stories. And thank you for your commitment, not only to the university, but to the people of Washington. Well, good evening. My name is Teresa Mosqueda, and I'm a Seattle City Council member, the newest member there, and more importantly, I'm a member of OPEIU Local 8, member of the labor movement, and have long fought with you as part of the labor movement, working with the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO. What I heard from you tonight was that all work has dignity, and every worker deserves respect. Whether you're a janitor, a custodian, whether you're a healthcare technician, whether you're making sure that our gardens are clean, that the grounds are kept clean, you're making this city safer. You're making this world a better place by caring for the patients in some of our most critical health centers, by educating the next generation, by making sure that you're able to raise your own family. We must live our values. Now on city council, we expect employers to follow the law. And I'm now in the position of asking our city to lead by example. And in doing so, I'm asking all employers, including our friends at the University of Washington, to help lead by example. Because when we say every workplace should be free from retaliation and harassment, we mean it for every employer, including the University of Washington. When we say that we want to raise the minimum wage and pass paid sick leave and have a living wage job for every worker. We mean for the workers also at the University of Washington. And when we fight to make sure that people can raise their families and have retirement security, we mean for you the fabric of the city that helps to create the next generation. So I take this job very seriously. I've stood on the strike lines with you. I've been here before on campus. I come from a long line of educators and activists, and this place has a huge place in my heart. I'm a graduate here of the University of Washington. My dad was the oldest of six, the first Chicano from his family to go to University of Washington and graduate and became a postdoc as well. We came here, we sat in on administration buildings before, we will be here with you again. I applaud the president for being here to hear this. We will be there with you all to make sure that those words turn into action and an actual contract and an increase in wages and benefits. Because that I think is the shared goal of our community. So thank you all. Thank you all for putting yourself out there. Thank you for being here to listen to everybody on the panel. I know you don't come to this lightly. It's been years in the works. We'll be here tomorrow, the next month, and many years to come, but not just on this fight, on making sure that we get free university for everyone and that everyone can have a living wage job because the problem with this university is that it is not actually publicly funded and thanks to my colleagues for fighting for progressive reform so that we can actually have revenue to invest in free university, childcare, housing, and healthcare like we know we all need. My name is Larry Gossett and I'm a proud proud graduate of the University of Washington. I was particularly struck uh, by the positive sentiment that all of you had as workers on the University of Washington campus because um, if, I, if I were uh, being treated with one or two percent raise and being overworked and not being able to uh, take care of my family adequately, it would be, I might be skipping or calling in sick two times a week, but I was struck by the fact that you all said it's important for us to serve this university, it's important for us to be the janitors, uh, the gardeners, the, uh, the workers at the uh, hospital, and to take care of our job. 
And Martin Luther King talked about, our namesake of our county, uh, talked about the importance of doing quality work. You all have impressively shown that. Now, in a couple seconds I have left, I need to tell you that the best way, that probably the only way that we're going to make significant progress is to build, and you've heard it from some of my other uh, progressive uh, elected officials, uh, as broad a base, uh, multi-worker, multi-racial, uh, unity around the rights of workers that this city and this county has ever seen. And we got to do it in a much more effective way than we have done in the past. My individual or personal commitment in closing is that uh, one of you said something about the ethical oversight of University Hospital. The uh, King County still owns all the buildings on that campus, and I'm going to go through the 15-year contract, unfortunately, that we already signed last year and see if there's any way that we can carve out a way to, for us to have consistent, every year, uh, definition of where uh, the University of Washington is weak in terms of the contract for that hospital, and then craft with the unions that work for the hospital, specific suggestions on how we might improve wages, working conditions, and safety. And I'm willing to do the same working with all the rest of the unions on this campus and outside of this campus to continue to work and make the workers of the university in general the best paid, the most safe, and the most secure workers in these United States of America. It's going to be hard, but with a mass movement and being sacrificial and working hard and having a clear vision that we participate in developing and supporting, we can do it. We can make a difference. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Shama Sawant. I am a member of Socialist Alternative. I'm the socialist on the Seattle City Council. And <laughs> and I am standing here in front of you today also as a rank and file member of the teachers union, the AFT Local 1789, and as an immigrant woman of color. Today, you gave a real picture of your work day. Despite pervasive understaffing, harassment, discrimination, and intimidation, you all are showing real pride and dignity and self-respect in your work as workers and the incredible solidarity amongst all of you. That is what really brings worker power. And that really moves me as a working person myself and as an elected representative of Seattle's working people. And I have to say, there is absolutely no dignity or self-respect in treating workers badly uh, on the part of the bosses, when, especially when they're getting paid so, so highly. I stand with you in demanding no privatization, absolutely. Keep the UW laundry. Yeah. I stand with you in demanding location pay, three and three, five percent regional pay. And I also have a message to President Kause and all the bosses at UW. No more empty words, as John Frazier said. We want action. And if you believe, if you truly believe that you, as bosses, if you truly believe that we don't have a sustainable situation, then rather than gouging workers, instead, join us in a mass movement statewide to tax big business. <laughs> Tax big business and close the corporate tax loopholes. Yeah. And if you all go on strike, I will be walking the picket line with you. But let's be clear. Let's be clear. The strike will be the fault of the UW administration and the Democratic and Republican establishment in the state that in such a wealthy city and state, they are not able to pay decent wages and have decent workplace conditions for our workers.
And last point. And last point. UW admin, you have no right to tell workers that they should live on substandard pay when you are getting paid six-figure salaries. As, as the worker said, try living on their salary for a week and see how it works out for you. And I say this, my fellow workers, I say this not with a note of hypocrisy, but with a note of reality in my own life. I get paid a six-figure salary by the city of Seattle, but I take home only the average worker's wage, and after taxes, the rest of my hefty salary goes into a solidarity fund for social movements, and if you all go on strike, you will be getting a donation to your strike fund, solidarity. And I, I was hoping, I was hoping we could, I could end with a chant if you will support me in this. When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. Stand up, fight back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Many of you, many of you have, have asked yourself and your, the person sitting next to you, what can you do to help bring resolution and fair pay? So uh, we are two minutes from the end, two minutes from the end. What can you do to help bring resolution and finally help the workers at UW win fairness and fair pay? And I want to give the mic to our two presidents of the local 1488 and 3488 to talk very briefly about what you can do to support them. And then the, we are going to have a student leader talk about what students might be able to do to help support this struggle. So John and Paula. You know what? Today we have uh, put on a show. We have told the stories of our lives and our kids' lives and what we go through. We have said to these people on this panel, this is the situation that we face. Now it is time for us to act. What we are doing, and people have talked about us having a strike. Make no mistake about what we're saying. We are going to go on strike. That is a guarantee. Because we know the university is not gonna come to the table Amen. and treat us fairly. So it is not will we, it is when. And we will need all of you on the side of the workers. We will need you to make sure that we close this university down. Right now, we're in the process of getting signatures or who will go on strike. And right now, that is, that is, that is moving. But I tell you this. And we're going to say this to the president. We're asking you today, if you don't get your team back to the table, you can guarantee you we will be out these doors. No doubt about it. And, and the university, uh, and here's the insult to injury. University ended negotiations, and they sent their people on vacation. The top negotiator went to Europe. Now, now think about. Okay, 30 seconds. I want to make sure oh, okay. that we, we hold to our time. Okay, minute, okay, so. okay. And then uh, you got uh, passed to Paula. I, uh, trust me, I'm going to get there. Make, think about the, the optics of one of their people offering us 2% and jumping on a plane and going on vacation in Europe when we are trying to put food on the table in America. It is not right. And I tell you, we will be out these doors. Thank you. You know, this summer, what did we say? Or what did they say? Two and two, what were we saying? Eight and eight. Eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight. So I want to tell you, Frazier says, okay, bring your negotiating team. But if they're only going to say two and two, forget it. You know, they've got to come up with a better number than two and two. Otherwise, we will walk. 
You know, and it's pretty bad that it's having to get to this point, but what do you want? Look at these people. You know, they can't make it here in King County. I remember at your annual address, you said how you were talking about faculty and researchers and that you were going to have to pay competitive wages to get them here. Well, what about us? You know, we've got to be able to make it here too. You know, so two and two is not enough. Is two and two enough? No. Is two and two enough? No. Is two and two enough? No. All right. We will strike. We will strike. Okay. We will strike. 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 All right. We will one strike. more. One minute. We have a student, uh, United Students Against Sweatshops. They have, these, these students have stood with us and with many of the workers on this campus. We are so grateful for your activism and your courage. And uh, I want them to tell a little bit about the work that you do. Just brief. Hey, I'm Sarana. I'm with United Students Against Sweatshops. We're the largest student Woo! organizing group in the country. And I'm here to say this. When Anna Mari tells us that she has students as the number one priority, we stand with workers. We will not accept a university that undercuts its lowest paid workers while paying its top 40 admin $12 million. That is the entire budget of the UW Laundry. We will not accept two and two. Students will stand with you. We will not accept a university that is unfair and unjust. So students stand with workers. Woo! All right, I wanted to end on one more chant, one more chant, one more chant. So we're gonna do this. Students are here with you. So. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. Yeah. Woo. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for supporting the workers in this struggle. For anyone that's willing to stay for a picture, where could we do it? I think if we all got on this wall, this wall, we could get a good picture. Anyone who can, bring your signs. And thank you to the panelists for coming, for listening, for giving your time. Thank you so much.